Medium, clairvoyance, spiritual healer and writer David Drew. David, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. It's nice to be here again. Right. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Psychic medium, clairvoyant, spiritual healer, writer. How, how, how do you find time to do all these things to start with? I mean, yeah, that's a difficult one. And also, um, people tend to get very, very confused about what is a clairvoyance. So people come up to me and give me their palm and say, can you read this? Or can I, when they say, can I have my palm read? I usually say, what color is it now? Because I don't do that. I don't read tarot cards, crystal balls, bumps on the head, runes. And so, of course, people say, well, you've told us what you don't do. What do you do? Mm -hmm. And there is a lot to the work I do, of course, but mainly it is passing on messages from those in the spirit world, or to put it bluntly, people who have, who have died. Right. And um, people derive comfort from that. I've done this work all of my life. How, how, do you, how, do you, how, how can you communicate with people from the spiritual world? Well, it's true to say that they communicate with me rather than I communicate with them. Of course, I'm, I'm 41 years old this year, and I've been doing this work all of my life. Since you were five, all... you discovered this was a... Uh, well, it uh, started you. when I was five years of age, and, and the, I was playing in the back garden with my mother, and, and my Aunt Bessie was pushing me on the swing, and mother was cooking dinner. And she called me in for dinner, and I said, is Aunt Bessie staying for dinner as well? And my mother dropped the dinner because Aunt Bessie had been dead for many years. Mm -hmm. And of course, there then followed the usual, my mother was taking me to doctors and child psychiatrists and all the rest of it, because I was seeing what other people didn't. But it was also very, very natural to me. What is it you see, though? Do you, do you see the actual person, or do you just see an aura? I see auras around people, I, uh, rather like a glow, like the Regibrec advert you've seen, and that tells mm -hmm. me a lot about people just by looking at the aura around them. But those in spirit, they will, they will communicate in various ways. Either I will see them, or clairaudiently I will hear from them, uh, or they may just, I may just sense their presence. You can feel them. There's, there's different ways of communicating. Sometimes people say to me, I can smell my mother's favorite perfume, even though she's been dead for a year. And mm -hmm. I say, that's your mother still with you, trying to communicate with you. And although you may not be able to see her or, or feel her, you, she's trying to let you know that she's there by sending this, this smell of her favorite perfume. Mm -hmm. There's all different ways that those in spirit do try to communicate with us. I've, I've, I've got a piece of paper in front of me now, which is uh, uh, a bit of a biography on, on David Drew. And it starts by saying, David entered this world once again in 1954 and lives with the knowledge of his past existences. You've lived before, David. Well, not just me. See, I, I, I have this thing about, I don't say I believe, because I know there is a very difference between a belief and a knowledge. And I know that all people live always. When I say that life is eternal... I don't just mean in front of you, but behind you. And, and so it is that not just me, but all of us, we have lived other lives on the earth and we have had existences in spirit. And I would like to think that perhaps the only difference with myself to other people is that I can actually remember my time in spirit and previous lives on this earth. And I would like all people to remember that this life on earth, whether you live to be a hundred, is so short and more and more people are questioning what happens next, what, where do we go to? Mm -hmm. And I have to say to people that we don't float along on a cloud playing a harp, or if you haven't been very good, you don't go down to the, the fires where you find a man dressed in a red cat suit and carrying a toasting fork. I believe these fairy tales that people or the church leaders have been giving people for so many years are very wrong. And what I'm trying to do is to give people the truth. Mm -hmm. I believe that if you have a belief in life after death, then what is wrong in finding out what that life is like? Because when people pass away to spirit, it's, it's as though they, your mother has gone to a foreign country. Okay, you're not going to see her perhaps, you're not going to feel her presence, but you can still communicate with her through mm -hmm. a medium. Now, when we, we die, now you're, you're saying in your biography that you've been on the, on the earth before, do we just eternally just keep coming back and coming back and coming back? Well, I have to say that I don't particularly like it here very much. I make the most of it. I hope we all do. But the earth plane is, is one plane of existence. And we do have to keep coming back time and time again to learn lessons. And that's what this life on earth is really all about, is that we have so many lessons to learn. And, you know, when people say to me, 
I keep going through the same thing over and over again, or I keep making the same mistake mm. over and over again. That is because you haven't learned. And so it is that sometimes we do have to keep coming back. But when you learn all the lessons you have to learn and progress in the spirit world, then you won't have to come back again. Mm. Now, you've written a book. The book is called Stairway to Heaven uh, by David Drew. Um, it features various things such as the spiritual world, reincarnation, as we've just been talking about here. Uh, chapter 6 in the book Stairway to Heaven mentions my mission here on Earth. What is your mission, David? Well, as I say, I believe that we come back time and time again, and I have come into this world with total recall of past lives, but more importantly, I think, of what it is like in the spirit world and why we have these earthly lives. And so it is that I believe that I have come to this earth to tell people what happens when we die, to tell people about God, to tell people about various religions, to tell people how they should live this life on earth. If I can be but a signpost to people, pointing them in what I hope is the right direction. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, people do get lost from time to time. And I see hundreds of people every week for various reasons. And I've traveled to many countries in the world. And one thing, can I just say, that I found quite fascinating was when I was touring Israel not long ago, and I was talking to Jews, to Christians, to Palestinians, to the Arabs, to the Muslims, and I found that I was getting on very well with all of them, but they can't get on with each other. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm always saying, that most of the wars and the problems in the world today are supposedly in the name of religion. Now, to me, that just doesn't make sense. Doesn't add up, does it? You, you mention in uh, Chapter 25, the end of the world. Tell us about Chapter 25. Is, it, is the end of the world now? I don't actually give a date on the end of the world. But you reckon but, it will come to an but end? But what I'm saying is, the world today is rather like a car rolling down a steep hill towards a cliff without a driver. It is on the course for destruction. But I don't give up that easily. I do believe that if we can change the minds of people living on the world, we can in turn change the world for the better. And mm -hmm. then, hopefully, the world will not have to come to an end. But the way things are going now, and I don't want to talk all doom and gloom, then I say that the world is heading towards the end of the world. You don't have to really just take my word for it. Look around you. Look at the build-up of nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. Look at the starvation that's going on in the world. You know, it is true to say that God provides enough food for everyone living on the earth, mm -hmm. and yet it's not distributed fairly. You only have to look in Colwyn, Bahintland, Indo or Conway to see injustices in this world. Mm -hmm. And what we've got to do is try and get things right. Okay, now, um, Stairway to Heaven, it's available in uh, all good bookshops. Within, As they say, uh, all good bookshops. That's right, within is. North Wales now. That's, I'm pleased uh, to say that it has sold, uh, they've just sent me a, um, a, a plaque actually, but it has sold over 20,000 copies in this do. country, and it goes on sale from March in America. Okay, that's the book by David A. Drew, Stairway to Heaven. It's available, as you say, in most bookshops. As far as the, uh, the mediumship is concerned, where you can... Um, see auras and talk to people who are in spirit. Uh, do you find that people put you on the spot on a daily basis and say, go on, tell me something? Yes, I do. And expect you to just switch it on as though it's yes. a light switch. Can that happen? Um, what happens is, because I've, of course, been asked this question many, many times, as I'm going through my earthly life, it's, it's a little bit like there's a television set on in the background. And... If I go to your house and I'm talking to you, and I happen to say to you, what's this film all about? You'll say, I haven't got a clue, I'm not watching it. But if I sit for a while and study, I'll tell you. And so it is with myself. I don't see anything all the time. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me, and you want me to, then I can mm -hmm. sit and tune in and tell you. The well, other thing instance, that people can can you say me... anything in the studio now with me? I mean, let me put you on the spot now. I will just tell you that I look at the aura around you, and mm -hmm. I have to say you're looking happy, jolly, fit, and well but there's an awful lot of grey in the aura around you. And suffice to say to the millions of listeners at the minute that all this represents is there is a lot of confusion, concern, uncertainty uh, with you. And there is also a health problem, something to do with the stomach where there's a grey patch around there. I don't know what it is. And in your personal, private, domestic life at the moment, there is a lot of, I'll have to use the word confusion or complications. 
Right, okay. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, now, that, that was through reading the aura around. That's just quickly looking at the aura around you because the, the aura is full of different colours and I also see signs, symbols, I see all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Mm -hmm. What I see is the easy parts. I've done that all my life. What is sometimes, however, more difficult is interpreting what it is that I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Because I remember not long ago, a lady came to see me privately, and I could see like a, a, a tree trunk branching off at the back of her. And I said, you have recently been divorced or separated. And she said, oh, no, dear. She said, uh, I lost my husband. He died last week. And so I, you could say I've got the separation rights, but That's I read right. it wrong. Mm -hmm. And this does sometimes happen. I do make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Do you find that when, when people come to you and want you to uh, uh, tell them about the, the people who've passed on to spirit, whatever, do you find that people are, are a little bit wary about talking to you and expecting you just to tell them things? Because if they talk to you, they might yes. think that you're, that you're just feeding off what they say. And Yes. M most of my work nowadays is done on stage to a large audience. Mm -hmm. I was recently in Preston Guildhall where there's over 900 people in the audience. So, of course, those people are not talking to you. I am just talking to them. Right. But when I see people come to see me privately, what I do find nine times out of ten is that they will sit in stone silence and listen to me talking to them. And then perhaps afterwards say, oh, well, the reason why I came is I wanted to know about this or I wanted to know about mm -hmm. him or my granddad died a month ago. He didn't make a will and I'm sure he meant all the money to be mine. Can you contact mm -hmm. him? And the truth is, I can't contact anyone in spirit. I can only tell you what it is that I see with you now. Who it is in spirit that may happen to be with you now and what they've got to mm -hmm. say. But I don't call anyone up. So they must um, uh, sort of come through you and let you know uh, that they want to talk to somebody. They, they have to give you permission. They have to appear to you. But if those in spirit choose to, of their own free will, they want to pass a message on. I mean, what has happened to me in the past, and I don't do this, is I may be sitting in, in a restaurant or in a pub, and someone in spirit will approach me and say, that's mm. my daughter on the next table, will you tell her I'm happy and well? Right. But I would feel a complete idiot walking up to someone and tapping them on the shoulder and say, by the way, your mother's here. That's and that right. isn't, perhaps I don't, mm. wouldn't want that or wouldn't appreciate that. So I don't do that. Mm. But of course, if people come to see me, uh, and sit in front of me for a private reading. Then I talk, because some people also say, don't give me any bad news. And I explain to people, mm. listen, sit in front of me. Let me tell you everything that I see, that I hear, that I feel, and I give it all to you as it is. I can't change anything. Yeah. And if it's good, bad, or indifferent, that's what I've got to say to you. Okay. Uh, David, uh, what can I say? Um, Stairway to Heaven. It's uh, in the bookshops now, uh, written by David A. Drew. David, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. And just reminding everybody, Stay Away to Heaven by David Drew, available in all good bookshops. David, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me.